Uh, hey everyone, this is Ross, and I want to give you guys an honest discussion, an honest review, a really a tough sell on why you should grow strawberries at home. Um, I don't know about you guys, but this is a huge bowl of strawberries. I mean, this, I don't know how much this weighs exactly, but this is probably like three or four pints of strawberries. Uh, maybe about three, let's say three. So this is about, if you get them on sale, that's about uh, 750, you know, 250 a pint, I think is reasonable. And within that pint, you're getting strawberries that have been bred for a specific purpose, which is to ship them across the country and for them not to get bruises. Also for them to hold up in, in hotter conditions. Um, because the strawberry is a very soft fruit, um, especially kind of out in nature in the wild and how the strawberry really began was that it was never really meant to be a fruit that was supposed to be shipped across the country. It, it wasn't meant for that. It's just very soft. And what they've done like with these, these store-bought strawberries is that they bred them for huge sizes Right, this is not that big. I mean, but this is a nice sized strawberry. You know, I've got some in here that are pretty decently sized that you would see in the in the store bought strawberry sizes, I guess. But most of them are more like this. You know. Most of them are about you know, the width of a quarter. Um I'm not entirely sure how to accurately give you guys a nice little size of these but if I were to put a quarter up to this that's exactly the size this would be um, so the point is they're breeding them for for size for color but more importantly they're breeding them for firmness that's really a key important factor uh, for a commercial strawberry variety so these varieties here that I'm growing at my house at home that I can just go in the backyard and pick them anytime I want. I have specifically chosen softer varieties of strawberries that are not as large that may actually have also better flavor that certainly have better flavor because when you breed for so long for size or for color, you're really missing out in almost all scenarios of the flavor. So not only are they they starting out with a strawberry that's just um, not as tasty, um, but they're also picking it sort of early. And you can really see this with some of the strawberries I've picked, is that some of these are a bit more white or more pink. Maybe on the bottom, there's a bit of whiteness down there. Um, you know, and the way that the strawberry kind of ripens is that the side that's getting hit by the sun will turn red the quickest. And then the side that's facing towards the ground will not ripen nearly as quickly. And you get that kind of, that ripeness that doesn't exactly complete itself, you know? You can see that this side's sort of red and this side's more pink or salmon color. So what I'm trying to say is that they sort of pick them at the, the inoptimal, inoptimal time, if that's even a word. And that really just right there with those two things just creates a completely inferior piece of fruit. So if you grow anything in your backyard, anything at all, and you pick it when it's perfectly ripe, when it's right off the tree, you let it go as long as possible to get it perfectly ripe, it is going to have way more sugar in it, way more nutrients, way more flavor, than something you had picked even two days prior, even a day. One day is a huge difference with these strawberries, with a lot of these fruits. And a lot of these strawberry growers, commercially, they pick them a bit early because they're then gonna be shipped. They need to be a bit more firm. Once they get perfectly ripe, they're even softer. So you have to really pick them at the right time. Also, if it's too warm, it's too hot, it's too dry where you guys live, so if you live in California, you may struggle with certain strawberry varieties because they just get really fermenty. Like they, they taste a lot like, um, almost like strawberry juice if there, if there was such a thing. They become kind of mush and they just don't really do well in that heat. So that's another reason I guess to pick them early. And this whole thing kind of just culminates to 
an inferior strawberry, an inferior product. Not only are you being able to pick them at the right time, you're getting the right varieties, but you can also select varieties that are really, really tasty. There's white strawberries that taste a lot like pineapple. There's purple strawberries. There's also the red strawberries and certain varieties that have been bred over time for flavor and not for firmness will actually have a bubblegum flavor to them. So this is a variety here called Mara de Bois. This is a French variety and the French really care about their strawberries. And this one has been bred over time. I actually, I don't know how much it, it really has been bred, but they've certainly been keeping it around for flavor. It's not the most firm strawberry. In fact, I can just pull this apart with my hand. I mean, look how, look how easy that was. This melts in your mouth way more than any other strawberry. I don't even have to bite this. This is like uh, chocolate. You put the chocolate in your mouth and it melts. The same thing is with this strawberry. But also the Mar de Bois is so highly regarded for flavor that it doesn't even really taste exactly like a strawberry. Take a strawberry and inject that with grape juice, with the Concord Welch's grape juice as an example, um, with bubble gum. And that's really what you get in this strawberry. So let me taste it. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's true, I definitely am getting that concrete grape flavor in there. When they're perfectly ripe, perfectly red, that's when they get that flavor to them. Mm. But if I were to eat this one, it's got that pinker color on the on the other side it's not gonna have that nearly as much and you're not gonna really be able to pick that up that's because with all these fruits like I said one extra day on the plant makes a huge difference so here's what I'm doing here is that I pick the ones that are perfectly red and I go out there every day you should go out there every day to pick your strawberries um, today I spent about 30 minutes. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a bit of time. But I'll pick the ones that are perfectly red and I'll eat those. I'll eat these fresh. Now I'll take the ones that are a bit pink on the uh, exterior here, like these, and then I'll make these into jam. You can freeze them. Because I picked so many, I can't eat them all at once. I'm gonna freeze some of them. You can also process them in some way, make them into a baked good. You can do whatever you want to do with these things. There's a million uses for strawberries. I also love throwing them in my kombucha. They make a really tasty kombucha with the fragrance, the really nice fragrance like a, a, a melon does as well. They're really fragrant fruits and they really make a nice kombucha. For those of you guys who do that. So we've got ourselves basically the whole thing here. We also have some strawberries that have been eaten. And these are usually strawberries that are maybe a bit past their prime or perfectly ripe. You can see they've been bit into them. They're a bit nasty. They're not something you really even wanna deal with. Uh, I'm also looking around here for some strawberries that are a bit fermented. Here's more that have been bit. Here's one that is a bit fermented. And if you let them get fermented here, you let them spoil, you will attract a bug, an insect, called spotted wing drosophilia at the right time of the year. That insect will really get into these soft fleshed fruits like raspberries and blackberries and strawberries and figs, um, even blueberries, and they'll kind of get in there and they will kind of mess with these and, and spoil them even further. I mean, you don't really want to eat this anyway, but um, that's just something you got to watch out for is, you know, you're not going to get the perfect fruit every time. But I would say nine times out of 10, if you're protecting them, you're picking them often, you're gonna get that perfectly ripe fruit. So let me take you guys now. I wanna take you guys around. Um, I've showed you guys in prior videos my huge patch of Mar de Bois out in the front. But I wanna take you guys over here to the early glow strawberries and show you guys what those look like. Talk about kinda of how to grow them. And then we're also gonna talk about how I'm protecting them. Um, before we do that, I wanna mention is that Right now, it's May 26th, and we're getting all these strawberries. 
sometime around mid-May I start to get them and I'll get them pretty much from mid-May all the way until July 1st. That's usually when the June-bearing strawberries will finish. And what is the June-bearing strawberry? That's the early glow strawberry that I'm gonna show you guys in just a minute. They fruit really heavily in June, right? That's their name, the June berries. So they, depending on where you live, will fruit just very early in the season, after the dormancy process, after it gets cold and now it starts to warm up, they'll get going. And they'll do that every year, very reliably, and they put out a lot of fruit. But there's something called day neutral strawberries and also ever bearing strawberries. And those, for the most part, will fruit for you at different times of the year and will also continuously fruit for a longer period of time, a longer harvest window. Not necessarily as much at one time, but it's more of a consistent fruiting um, that really makes it uh, worth your while because it's nice to get all these strawberries right now, but I can't eat all these, right? So I have to freeze them, I have to process them. But later in the year, I can really start to keep up with it. I can come out here and pick maybe, you know, 10 or 12 strawberries in a day and eat those and be totally happy, you know? Whereas this is like 50 or 60 at one time. And um, that's just how it is. So basically, for about 75% of my six months of growing season of frost-free days, I'm getting strawberries. They'll fruit for me from mid-May, so maybe about 15 days after our last frost, all the way for another um, 45 days until July 1st. Then we get a nice little break and they start up again in July. So there's a month break there, or they start up, I'm sorry, in August. So from July 1st to August 1st, there's very little strawberries, if any. And then they fruit for me the Mar de Bois, which are, I believe, day neutral strawberries. Those will fruit from August 1st all the way to November 1st and put out a really big second crop. So I'm harvesting almost the entire year. But let me take you guys around right now. And let's show you guys these plants. I think you're going to be pretty amazed at how easy they are to grow. Um, that's the other big thing that I have kind of been trying to preach to you guys is that yeah, strawberries are very tasty, they come in big abundance, but I don't care for these things. I don't take care of these plants. The only thing I do is protect them, and we can talk about protection right now because we have birds, we have a groundhog, we have a skunk, we have rabbits, we have deer. All that stuff loves to eat these strawberries. So what I do is I just get myself a bird net, throw that over top of the plants, and then I staple it in here with one of these garden staples. And you can pull these up out of the ground if you want, Say you can't get up underneath these. Hopefully you guys can see this garden staple pretty well. But that's what that looks like. But you can take them out, like I said, and I just come in underneath the net and grab these strawberries. It looks like here's one that I actually missed. You can pick that today, because you don't want to let these go past their prime either. But look, here's one as an example that is red on this side, and I turn it over, not red. So you really have to kind of be careful and observe the whole thing. Uh, but these things are very easy to care for, like I said. We have so much rain here, so much humidity that if you put down the right soil to begin with, you have maybe a more clay soil, you add in some compost in there, it's really going to create the best growing medium, the best soil for these plants to stay happy. You don't want them, let them dry out. You know, that's a really big issue for you guys that maybe live in um, you know, California or somewhere really dry. So you don't want that to happen. But um, for me here, it's just no, it's very simple. All I do is plant them in the ground and I've never showed you guys actually how to plant them, but it's very simple. As simple as just putting your hori hori in the ground, moving away some dirt and sticking the strawberry plant in there, plant it at the right height and you're pretty much good. I mean, that's all it is, is having the right soil and planting the strawberries at the right planting depth. Now, once you get them in the ground, they're gonna start fruiting for you almost immediately. You wanna kinda take off a lot of those, those flowers or those strawberries, especially in the first year. I know that kinda stinks. But then what they start to do, and they're actually already doing this for me, is they're coming in here and they're putting out runners. And you can see, here's actually a runner right here. And this is a, a plant, why they call it a runner is it kind of runs away from the main plant. And we can 
trace this back all the way to this guy here. And then it kind of really just roots itself in the ground. On the bottom of this runner is little root nodules that will come into the ground and actually root themselves on their own. You don't have to do a thing. And some people have told me and have been worried about planting strawberries in the yard because they can take over because of that. But if you come in here with the mower, you come in here with the weed whacker and you have a nice line of where your bed ends and where the grass begins, you can really control these things as much as you want. There is no them taking over your yard. I mean, everybody mows their lawn for the most part. So it's really, really simple. And because they're in the ground, they're very healthy plants. They spread very easily. They're very vigorous. They put out even larger berries. But if you have them in containers, you can certainly do that. And I've done this in prior years as well. Get yourself a really flat container. Get yourself a, like almost like a gutter. And that's exactly what I've done in the past. I think I may have, I think I still have them under here, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, you can see the gutter down in here. Let me bring you guys over. It's a bit difficult to see down in here. But these are my gutters that I've had in prior years. And because they're so long, they're 10 foot long. They're only about four inches high, four inches wide. You fill in the gutter with soil, plant the strawberry plants in here. Keep it very wet, right? Keep, make sure it's moist at all times. And then also you have to feed them quite often. And that's a, the big issue with growing fruit, any fruit in containers is that you gotta make sure that you're feeding them well. And you will get the production that you're looking for in the ground. So you can do this at your home. You know, you can do this at an apartment. You know, you don't have to be growing them in the ground. But for me, this is so easy that it's just a no-brainer for me. It really is. I don't understand how anyone could buy a store-bought strawberry in terms of flavor. Um, especially then once not only do they taste it, but then they realize how easy they are to grow and also how abundant they are. That I come out here and I eat so many strawberries that I get sick of them. So for me, that's my sell, guys. I really hope uh, you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, they do have their issues, depending on where you live, but for most of the United States, these guys are just no-brainers. Just so, so simple. All right. So grow some strawberries at home, guys. Um, definitely check out some more different varieties too, like Mar de Bois. Check out varieties that are less firm. You know, there's also something called Alpine strawberries, which we have talked about in the past. And the Alpine strawberry is a really small strawberry, really intense bubblegum, Concord grape flavor that I was talking about in the Mar de Bois. They are really interesting, those strawberries. And I'm actually propagating quite a bit to then put them in different places in the yard. But, um, yeah. All right, guys. 